So basically, you got your shirt before mine. <laughs> yes, I did. Okay, but Smug the mug don't know the fucking war that I had to go they through don't. to get this fucking thing. So they don't. Um, do you want to? Do you want to for the episode? Maybe. Do you want to maybe briefly flash the back so everyone at yes. home can? You gotta tell me. That's pretty good. That's that's all they need to see. If they want their own, they can buy it. Yes. But how's that yes. for a promo? And roll those credits. Bang. From Sydney, Australia, all the way to Portland, USA, two misfits hang out after class to riff on the B-sides of professional life. These are your professional misfits. All the way from Sydney, Australia, I'm your host, Christopher Sellers. Portland, Oregon, I'm Brody Ipox. And welcome for the final episode of season two, episode 20, where your professional misfits will be riff on the B-sides of professional life. B, we made it to the end of season two. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And uh, I will say this one has had a different set of challenges. And <laughs> again, we made it, you know, and that I think I, I think I've sent you the video. I'm not sure that she, that it, it's that quote about, you know, again, 90% of podcasts fail after episode 21. Yeah, you've sent me a couple. There was, when we got past episode three, you're like, dude, like X percentage of podcasts don't even get past episode three. I'm like, okay, bro. And then we got past 21 and you're like, dude, 90% of podcasts don't even get past episode three. I'm like, okay, bro. Uh, but to be fair, like season season one for us, if you're if you're keeping count, Smith, it was was ten episodes, and it was supposed to be audio only. But if you're a Patreon, you can get the videos of that episode. Uh, season two, we thought you know double double the size, double your pleasure. So we'll make it twenty episodes, um, and and so we tried that. You know, longer story arcs, uh, and so broke it up. So here we are now. We'll talk a little bit about season three and and moving forward. We're probably going to go back to ten episodes because one a week it breaks down to about three months for you guys. So it makes life a bit easier for us, a bit more manageable, and we can keep the content spicy and fresh for all of you at home. But it doesn't. It sure as hell doesn't feel like twenty. Um, and we've had some and we've had some solid guests and some solid discussions as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say it's like it, now that we're approaching the end of season two and the 20 episodes set, it's like the runner's high off of a marathon. When you, do we you, crash? It, it, well, I'm, I'm not sure yet. But, uh, that, it, it was interesting because it was a trial run for us. We're like, let's try 20. Let's see what it looks like. Yep. Um, and for you guys at home, that was kind of a production note because our style for season one, we did have a highlight video for every episode. So essentially, we hit 20 videos on our YouTube channel for episode one. Algorithmically, we're trying to match that. And um, we have, and uh, holy shit, man. <laughs> shit has happened. <laughs> shit well, has happened. Yeah, and it was, it's, we also launched the Patreon for season two. Mm -hmm. And so that was, we wanted to bring that in early um, and structure that appropriately. So everyone who's listening on Patreon is actually listening to this in the future because you get it two weeks in advance and then it's released to the public two weeks delayed. Uh, and so that was an experiment for us to see how that goes. And the uptake's been pretty decent, actually, for a very young podcast. And with that, maybe we should talk about this a bit because with that comes... The merch push, the professional misfits merch push, which we should have at the time of recording this merch, fingers crossed, merch should be available. And Brody and I have been talking, we're probably going to build a misfits shop on the page. So you'll be able to access it through that. If you're a Patreon tier member, you'll get discounts on all of the merch. Uh, and I know I might have mentioned in an episode earlier on love that if you if you really loved yourself and really loved your friends and family, you'd support them with a professional misfits t-shirt and attire. Yes. 
Yep. Um, there's the plug. There's the guilt trip for Christmas. So. <coughs> Perfect timing. Perfect, Perfect timing. Time, right? With, like we planned it. Um, just a little bit. Just a little bit. But there's more than that. There's more than, there's more than just a Patreon. There's more than just a merch page. B, you've got big plans for season three, and you've also seemed to have attracted a couple of corporate sponsorships and affiliates, which is fucking out of this world. But do you want to tell Misfits about that? Yeah, so that that is exciting, and that's a win. And again, you touched on it being a young podcast, and it is. You know what I mean? So for all intents and purposes, a lot of people need the burden of proof that someone is going to pursue longevity before they mm -hmm. make the decision of investing. Um, we're blessed that the space that we're in and the things that we're talking about are received enough by people of influence that want that impact in their industry as well. And um, I don't want to name names yet, but you guys will know. You guys will know. Um, two, two, two people. Yeah, two people. And it, what's interesting about that is one of them, essentially, that was completely on their own. Um, that, that was their interest. That was their effort. And uh, that's just from listening to the podcast. So that's going to be exciting. We're not sure what that looks like for you guys. We want to make it tangible in a way mm. that it serves the sponsor, but it also doesn't disrupt you guys, right? To where the show's not fucking built for the sponsors, right? That's not what this is going to be. So there's a little construction that has to go on there, and I, I, we're going to nail something really sweet. Go ahead. No, I was... I was sort of just thinking out loud because we haven't, we prefaced early, especially in the beginning of this season about, yes, it's a podcast. We're also building a business and a channel and this is what it takes. Um, and we're okay being transparent about that. And this is part of what's been cool and doing it this way is that we've managed to attract other misfits, other professional misfits with a yep. need for sponsorship or to have these discussions. And so then they've come to us and said, we want to be a part of it. Now, anyone that's worked in media, anyone that's worked in social media, anyone that's worked in podcasting knows that doesn't happen. Normally you're hustling like a motherfucker to try and get, you know, a you're mattress. Pitching. Yeah. To try and get a mattress sponsorship. Or yep. some, or some yep. shit like this. So it's it's really cool, really fortuitous, and and to be honest, Brody's hard work and vision because this has been his vision, and he saw this, and he saw this niche and this way to do things, and both of these contacts have sought him out and said, "Bro, I want to be a part of. It. Listen to the podcast, love it, love what you got. I want to support you." So personally, it's nice. Um, and then as well as professionally, it's really fucking cool because what it means for us is that the message and the tone and the work that we wanted to do with you listeners at home is landing. And it's not just landing to casual misfits who listens for fun, but it's also land landing with professional misfits who get it, you know, who get that there's, there's something missing it, for all this talk of authenticity and and fucking everything else to convert which we're not super interested in but we can sit in that space and have conversations and attract people who who notice that we're doing it differently and so if the message from us in the podcast for the last 30 something episodes has been you're allowed to do things differently watch us as we do things differently now we're starting to attract professionals who do things differently. Yep. So that a yep. fair assessment be? Oh, that's, that's awesome uh, on the head. And it, it, and it's exciting too, because I like the way that you phrase that. And, and it's not to um, create a separation between any of the misfits. It's just that I think there's a large difference in intention sometimes with when you hear these kind of conversations and it can be internal or it can be very external. And I think a lot of the people that we're running into that want a piece of this understand that externally, a lot of things 
need to change and mm. it takes moving the needle to do that and nine times out of ten it also takes collaborating so yeah we're we're really lucky and that's going to be exciting that's going to be that's going to be a whole new invent adventure in and of itself yeah and so that's that's something that has come to our table towards the end here of season two so <laughs> like b said like fingers crossed this should be in place by the time we launch season three, which would be really fucking cool to raise our channel and you guys with us, like season three, fresh 10 episodes, hot new take, new direction, a couple of new services as well, which we, which we might get into. Um, so we, we talk about doing the work in terms of level up. You might, if you've been here for the ride, you can see us, we've been doing the work. And hopefully by se season three, we can show you that we've leveled up. Um, no, that's, I, I, that's, that's one thing that I would love that does translate to the misfits. If you, if so, for instance, e even just on an aesthetic level, you look at season one and the setup and the construction and it's clean and it looks good and it's coherent. And then you look at season two and there's a drastic shift and it feels even cleaner and it feels even better. And not only that, we had Patreon and we introduced social media. And now season three, we're really implementing the business plan and the sponsorships and the longevity of the show, which again, I think is different than a lot of mm. people. I think a lot of people start a podcast, throw it to the wind and hope to God for the best. And it's mm -hmm. like you said, you're scraping, you're scraping and scratching and hoping somebody hears you or sees you or, and we're, we're really in this sweet spot where some of our social media videos have hit over a thousand views. We've had some of our I YouTube didn't even know videos, that, that's cool. <laughs> our YouTube videos go over a hundred views. Um, we've seen consistent growth. And one of the things I want to talk about too, in this episode is that it has not been as clean cut. For us as well and that's something that again we there's full transparency i think three times this season fucking if i'm being real with you guys i died of exhaustion and left chris hanging on the fucking meeting uh not good that's not professional at it's, all it's true it's true we are, <laughs> yes it's, it is. It it's is. it's true even our, the last time he did it as well i had to call him out on it and i went look yep. I'm, you know, I'm here for this thing. let's talk about that because right. our first, our first, was it our first episode this season? Was that criticism? No, that was it, our it first been voted episode. That was right, our first right, right, voted right, right, episode. Right. Yes. So the yes. first episode you guys voted on was criticism. And one of the things that I came to in that episode was that I can take it. And I got a very good opportunity to take it. And, it, and, the thing is, I think a lot of people would take that position that it's like, I could overly explain how I felt and what I was going through, but it still doesn't matter. It wasn't professional, point blank, period. And if you didn't feel you had the space to say that, that's when I feel you you come to that, yeah. that All right. crossroad. So, so for the context for the Misfits at Home, basically, Brody and I had set up a production meeting um there was a few time sensitive things and we had to record and get some things in and you know we've got a schedule that we roll out and we normally meet on an australian monday a us sunday and b messaged me and said hey can we push it to tomorrow i'm like sure no problem because he had a few family things on so we do that set up the time he even messaged me that morning said be good for this time i'm like yes i am um i showed up at that time nothing b stood me up no text, no nothing. He ghosted me. And if you've been following the season, you know, there's been a, f a few family dramas that Brody's gone through. So I'm not going to push. I'm not going to pry. Normally he's got a decent explanation or normally he messages like an hour later and says, oh, fuck, man, my bad. Um, and this time he didn't. And so it wasn't until the next morning that I get like an A4 message of this is what happened tiffany was supposed to send a message but she didn't and then you didn't get it sorry about that and there's all this other stuff going on 
and we're, and getting to the thing on criticism and here's the thing so obviously i understand the circumstance obviously i understand that Brody's mum had only passed away a few months ago and that's not going to vanish overnight. There's always going to be those sort of residuals where friends, we've got a professional podcast, he's got boys and a partner and all these other responsibilities that I don't have. So I can be sensitive to all of that. At the same time, this wasn't the first time there's been a delay or, or, or whatever. And I've... Well, it, well it, it like kinda, you had said, yeah. I, I do want to say this. He, he had already made an adjustment for me. That, that, I think, in my opinion of this situation, that is what exacerbated the entire problem was that I, I had already made that expectation that that adjustment was going to set us straight. Yeah. And I, I'm fucking and, dead and, asleep. <laughs> yeah. And, and then with no word. And so basically I had to, and this is the thing, I, I have that moment of, well, do I just let it slide? Because Brody's got a ton mm -hmm. on his plate. Or do I kind of say, well, actually, you pissed me off. And in this case, I said, well, actually, I'm kind of pissed for all of these reasons. Yeah. And, and clearly, it's like, I'm on your schedule at the moment. So anytime you've wanted to shift, I've shifted. I've been flexible and whatever else. But to shift again and then to be stood up with no explanation. And we got shit to do. And we're dropping balls. So... On over here, I can understand the personal circumstances. Over here, gonna need a little bit of responsibility and accountability. And then, of course, I send this off and I hold my breath because I don't know how it's gonna go. <laughs> and then, but we're talking about criticism. Can Brody take it? Yes, he can. He went, You're absolutely right. I apologize. Here's the circumstances. This is what I'm gonna do. This is what I'm gonna take care of. And I think we met up. No, not even, because I said, I think I was still a bit you, pissy. He, 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 he was upset. He was still I, upset. I said, thanks. I hear all that. How's this? You know, we'll take the rest of the week because you can decompress what you need to. I can chill out. We'll re-meet at our time whenever. And you're like, yep, cool. That works for me. And then everything, I even think like either the next day or a few hours later, I sent you some notes on something and we're back on normal production schedule so no animosity no passive aggressiveness no remember that time it was just which i do want to say um i mean in you i think you know a little bit more than the misfits which i'm sorry guys there are some things i don't share but um i, I i've been going through shit in my relationships around me that it, it's not necessarily easy and um mm. i don't have the expectation of anyone to show up as the best versions of themselves and give me everything i need but that's what you did i mean sometimes we all need a kick in the fucking pants i, I it's it's that's honest that's honest that's that's real that's honest and since honestly that conversation i've moved my own needle to where now the focus is on season three the focus mm. is back on the podcast i've recentered i've had that space and I'll, I'll i'll be real with you i think if you hadn't have been able to have been honest and it was just something that slipped under the rug not that i i would do it with any intention but i don't think my eyes would have opened yeah i think it's, maybe i had that intuition as well i think it was a little bit of a for as long as you passively allow something, you passively allow something. And, and I was passively allowing those emotions to get in the way of mm. what we have to do. You know mm. what I mean? And I love you, Misfits. I love you. Um, my mom died. But again, in my eyes, it, it, the space that you hold for the things that you still need to do, you still you still need to hold that space. It, it, you can't, it, you can't just, you can't just continue to fall. You know what I mean? Mm. At some point you got to pick yourself back up and get back in the ring and start swinging. And even if it's fucking wild and, and incoherent, at least you took the steps to get back in the fucking ring. And that's kind of what I feel happened is y mm. you're, you're my fucking, you're my corner. And you said, bro, you're, you're fucking dicking around. Get get back in there. Like it's it's time to play. And uh yeah, here we are. Here we are. And there's been an upswing since. 
which is and you you guys can have conversations about difficult shit too and it not lead to animosity and anger and hate i, I swear to god it's possible i promise it, it is promise. possible it is it is possible despite how the first podcast played out uh <laughs> Well, it, you know what's funny is maybe maybe we should not not to not to full recap. If you guys want, um, I think in episode two or three of season like, one is a full breakdown of or, what or happened. even no no it's it's this season. It's like season. It's episode two or something where like do we make good pieces partners? And this it's the right. first anyway. So You're we're right. not yeah, yeah. We're not going to revisit. It's 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 well until we're done. Bleep names. <laughs> you, guys, oh, you guys should go check it out. <laughs> you, you, did, you, did. you guys should go check it out. Hilarious, <laughs> hilarious. Um. So, all right. Season. What's season three look like? What season three look like? Here's here's what we discussed, Misfits, because we you know we uh, season one is you know the taster of you getting to know us and us getting to know you and figuring out you know how we want to go things um season two was sort of the main bit meaty um explore all the relationships so season three what did we do we'll tell you what we're not going to do we're never going to do youtube reaction comment commentary number one i was waiting for you to say thank you sorry guys <laughs> yeah, literally never going to happen in the never history happen. of the misfits so when, we're never going to do anything like like immediately topical like that so how do we how do we keep the misfit vibe, but also how do we deliver some sort of substance to to you guys and and to the folks we want to work with? So the the angle and the direction we came up with, and see if this vibes with you, is where where if there's a professional space and a friendship misfit space, we try to capture both on the Venn diagram, but we we'll probably lean a little bit more into the professional space as in to drag the misfit element into the yes. professional space. Yes. And so part of what goes with the, the content and the episodes of season three is also some professional services of ours, which Brody's been hashing out in terms of uh, media production or media strategy or there's there's a few episodes we've got lined up which we don't know whether it'll be public or patreon we're still figuring this out but like if you wanted to build your own misfit podcast how would you do that and we can lay out the steps that we took but most importantly it's it's strategy and scheduling before you even pick up a microphone um and and before most you even people think about a microphone. Right. And most and most people don't think that way. It's like, oh, we're friends and we're super interesting, so we're gonna record a podcast and people will listen. Not speaking of the speaking of the failed podcast, right? We actually did map out the entire season one before Chris invested in a mic. True. True. Yeah. Um pieces pieces, and they matter and when they land. And this is, and this is the one of the things that we did differently is we're not going to fly by the seat of our pants and riff on whatever it was in the news that week or some hot scandal. It's like, I'm going to, the, and the reason we're talking about season three with you guys now is giving you a heads up of, of how we've structured it and where we want to go. Uh, because that's the way that. It will be a bit different. It will be. It, it, and what I'm hoping to is and, and for a little insight for you guys. And I mean, maybe for Chris, because I actually haven't specifically talked about this strategy in the long term, we have produced enough content between season one and two that any of you guys, casual listeners, anybody that doesn't want to dip into the professional side or is in need of those services or that interest, we're going to still have a place for that content and that's going to be recycled. That's going to be talked about. That's going to be used. It's going to be on social media. You're going to see it still. So there's going to be things that you consume, consume. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I highly doubt chronologically you guys have made it through every single episode because it is 30 plus hours of mm. listening. So go, go check it out, you know? And then if you get the taste, what I'm hoping is, that a spark of creativity hits you. And like Chris said, you might want to drag the misfit into your space, right? And uh, 
you'll know with us that it's possible. And I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that's, I think that is the focus of season three is like, how do you be a professional misfit? So how can you operate in your world and do things differently? I know um, off the top of my head, a few subjects I've got penned on paper there is look, even how do you, how do you deal with the conflict and the loneliness if you are a misfit? Because that comes with the territory folks. If you, if you work at the nine to five, or even if you work at the CAF um, and you're a little bit differently, or if you've got different ambitions or, or, or whatever, whenever you meet the status quo, whenever you run into that resistance, you're going to have to learn how to manage it. And people, not even people saying no, but people just ignoring you completely. And that's, that can be very defeating. And it can be very, very lonely. And so how do, how can you manage it? And how can you keep that internal spark solvent? And how can you care for yourself and still pursue the thing that you want to, you know, without torching everything and everyone around you, for instance. So as much as there's the, this sort of philosophical talk about it, we also want to give you practical tools and steps of it, it can be done. Um, another example which ties ties into this loosely, so bear with me, is I'll probably be publishing my second book by about the time that this episode is released. Thanks, man. But and this one's and to be completely left of center, this is a street photography coffee book. Right. And for, for a lot of you at home, you're probably just going, what the fuck? <laughs> it, it's so funny that you said coffee book because i i i i didn't i didn't directly know i mean i'm coming oh, right, right, right. coffee book sorry coffee, coffee, coffee table, table book i mean yeah yeah, table, yeah 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 right i i i get it yeah lounge books is what they're called like the right, same right, thing right. Like you're just sitting in the lounge you pull up a a poster book or whatever it That's may it. be yeah i'm if you guys haven't, I'd like you to, even if you leave this episode right now, because you're 30 minutes in, <laughs> you can, you can <laughs> take off if you need to. But go check out Chris's LinkedIn. Go to... It's going to do... If, if it shows that on the video, I'm going to lose my mind. Right. That, that... Oh, my God. Anyways, go to Chris's LinkedIn. Sundays are for art. The street <laughs> photography that he's talking about, you'll get a really good glimpse into that. and. He, I think you'll understand in context why it makes sense because, mm. and, and I want to say this to you. I, I wanted to say this when you called it props to you on having some fucking confidence in your fucking work. I, I I'm sorry. I I'm being honest. Cause there's so many people that I know in, for instance, a close friend that we're talking about building another service with for the professional misfits mm. scared shitless of his own work. And he's fucking good at it. He's fucking good at it. And mm. to see someone, and I, I and I know you've got your own stuff with it. I know you you've got your own things you're working through. Um, but again, to to, and I want to say it's confidence. I want to say it's confidence. But that's that's how it reads, and not in an, this arrogant way. It's almost because of the way that you framed it on LinkedIn. Hey, is this something I should try? And the fucking resounding yes that you got back just yeah, made that it was, even more that, clear for me. Yeah, that was quite sweet. Um, yeah, so for the for the misfits at home, I I have one camera and I have one lens, and I like black and white street photography. And I've been taking it casually. I could well, I've got photos from like two thousand ish, um, <laughs> but like no some way. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and some of my some of my photographs, some of my photographs on negative, negative. Some of my mm -hmm. photos of negative are from around Europe and Paris and Prague. And I, I don't know if I'll include them in the book because this is more of a focus on Sydney street photography. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we'll see. But yeah, every every Sunday on LinkedIn, it's like Sundays are for art, and I'll post one of these photos, kind of basically as a fuck you to LinkedIn that art. Uh, art has a place in the professional landscape. And for those who know me well, 
it's a demonstration of creative skills that equally apply in the creative space. Like photography teaches you contrast, dimension, composition, uh, the ability to dynamically react in the circumstances I love in that, that moment. Shit. Right. And that's, and that's and this what is I like why about I love your photography. Thanks, man. Um, and this is, and this is, and this is specifically why I love it because you've got, you have to be there to get the shot. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's no, there's no faking it. And, and, and with that light in that, it's funny because if you, if you look at the image, you might go, Oh, that's cool. That's whatever. And, and, and have a certain impression about it. But for those with a little bit more insight and depth, you realize you had to be there to see that in that light, to frame it, the angle, to get that shot all in milliseconds, Fra to see it in your mind through the lens and to capture it. That's what's f cool as fuck. Like my, my three rules for street photography is it must be candid. So no, no staging, no poses. Um, I prefer black and white. I have some stuff in color, but I prefer black and white and avoid Photoshop. I, I'd so, be interested to see your color shots. Yeah, well, there, there's probably a couple up there as well. And, and a few will definitely make the book. Um, the food hall shot, for instance, that you saw. On yep, the, there's one, one of my favorites. Cool. I told Chris I'd buy that shit right now. I'm not even uh, kidding. If he had a print, I would fucking... De yep, decide for yourself wall. decide for yourself misfits so the so the point is the point is yeah so i've I've gone from written writing my my first book and re publishing that in december applied creativity so there's my manifesto on how creativity is six sets of skills which are universal to everyone and here's how you learn them so i solved creativity for everyone i've done that <laughs> i've done that um Read Read right book. and now so book number two I'm sort of stepping way left and and doing a portfolio of street photography. And where we are right now is my last post on the weekend was, I thought I might do this. Here's some of the process that I've done to kind of get myself ready for it. I put all my photos together, all the ones I want to include and realize basically I don't have enough. And I feel like they don't, they're not good enough. And is this a vanity project? And all the insecurities you get when you're a creative. Yeah. Um, but of course, what you also learn with a, as a creative is this is normal. You feel lost. You have your doubt. You kind of sit it on the shelf and go, Hey bro, you, you do your thing. I'm going to have coffee and I'll come back when you're done. Uh, and so the simplest solution to not having enough photos is go and take more photos. So that's what I've been doing for the last couple of days. And I'll continue that for the next couple of maybe two or three weeks. We'll see. Um, but I can already get started on, publishing and, and, and production. So look into, again, like dragging the misfit into the professional space. Yeah. Yeah. You know, exactly. and, and this and came then, from Sundays or for art on LinkedIn guys. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it's been a conversation over two weeks, two weeks ago, it was, what do you think if I made this into a coffee book? And I was very pleasantly surprised by everyone that responded. And then this week was, the steps to turn it into a coffee table book and, and sort of sharing the process. Um, and everyone's been with me on that as well so far. So hopefully by the time this comes out, the book is either in our misfits shop or is available. Um, but I, and that'd be just a cool pro it's a cool project to keep me sane while I'm waiting on other things as well as building this channel. So, Which Jesus, I, I I wish again. It, it's funny talking about earlier how many people feel they need the permission to pursue something of passion for them, right? Yeah, right. And he, and here you are, right? We're we're in passion projects. We're building practical projects. We're doing this stuff, and your mind says, "I need to fill more space." And the things that you're choosing <laughs> to fill it with, well, bro, I'm, I'm I know I'm not saying. I'm not uh, saying no, I'm clapping you on the back because look, I would so much rather be in the company of someone that says, well, fuck, I'm bored. I'm going to go make a book. Okay. <laughs> then in the company of Ridiculous. someone that says I'm fucking bored, let's go have a drink and some yeah. pizza. Or I have nothing to do. It's like, well, do you want to go out? Nah. Do you want to go sit? Nah. Do you want to go to the, nah. Like, it's like yeah.
come up with something. I mean, seriously, anything. And uh, uh, yeah, misfits, it's 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 in your ability, man. And if you guys just sunk into who you were and you fucking liked it, you would you'd be willing to follow more paths. I think that make you ultimately happy. Yeah, I I think we we talked a little bit about it a couple of episodes back with Matilde in terms of exploring mm-hmm. off the main street. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it, there's no, yes. You know, and that was I think that's I think that's a really nice analogy because you, you don't you, you don't need to wander too far. You won't get lost. You can still find your way back, but eventually you're going to find a little alley that you love detouring down, and you're going to be far from the main street, and you don't want to go back the way that you came. Um, and then when you're a, you're a crazy child like me, you've got about a dozen of those alleys, and you're really not interested in the main street. It's funny. It's really funny i'll bring this full circle because i was out today with the camera before we sat down and was literally walking along one of the main streets knowing this is boring as fuck because this is not where all the juicy shit is all the juicy shit is in the back alleys in the little laneways in the in the off streets and the one-way streets in the all of that um that's where you find the gems not on the clean shop fronts Interesting. You know, when did you start pursuing photography? Uh, look, it's look always a casual thing, probably since high school, since I've had a camera. I'd say, funnily enough, I'd say early 2010s-ish, around then, is when I picked it up and, 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 and just, started, just started walking the streets with the camera. Um, and to, to, to her credit, my long-term ex at the time, she was the one who would actually poke me and said, you should, you should do something like this. And I would always dismiss her and say, you're my girlfriend. You have to say that. And she would want to ram my head through a table because it, it didn't matter. You're right. You know, you um, know, my opinion on that shit too. I, 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 I did. I, uh, come on. <laughs> um, Maybe I'd listen to someone now. I I don't I'm know. Gonna, I'll find someone random and buy them off next right. time. Right. Tell well, them to give you the news. <laughs> yeah, and well, LinkedIn was that this time because here's a bunch of here's sort of a bunch of strangers, kind of not really, but they don't owe me they don't owe me any claps in the back. They don't owe, owe me any false praise. Um, and a, apart from those, the the metrics on those posts. At, it's funny. I can I can post universal theories. I can post all sorts of carousels and anecdotes and insider you interesting can play information. The LinkedIn game. I can do that game, <clears throat> and then often the more popular posts will just be like, "Here's a black and white shot, untitled," and it, you know. So there's there's uh, uh, some silent evidence there as well. <clears throat> Well, I don't think so silent. I mean, one of the things that I thought was extremely cool about that post was in the comments you had said, if you remember a shot, tell me what was yeah, your favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You actually had quite a few comments of people specifically remembering shots. And that, that's true. That, to me, that's what I would read. I, uh, yeah. When someone holds something, you know mm. what I'm saying? When they yeah, hold it, yeah, they, yeah. they hold on to it. It meant something. And That's then there was, rare. That, yeah, I, yeah, I hear you. And then there was, I remember Amber said, oh, I hadn't seen this shot before. Like, That's, okay, that's cool. Um, and again, you know, black and white, black and white photography, street photography, especially, like, bits, it's a bit artsy. It's a bit, like, whatever. So I know it's a bit distinct. I know my style and I. Well, I think is, it's hard to do well. Well, that, that's the thing. And it, it's, it can be, <clears throat> it's one of those things of art is like, because it's great because there's no rules, but, <laughs> you know, so how can you sort of judge a good shot? Um, and I know I have a bit of a distinctive style and I really like strong contrasts of, you know, strong blacks to whites and everything in between where a lot of people, a lot of people on the street are just about shooting fashion or shooting like faces close up and stuff like that. Um, so it was, and I guess overall it was, it's what it it feels like to me. I, I, I don't know. Oh, that's that's, nice. Yeah. I don't know if I'm being too vague, but it, it, uh, well, I guess, look, the, 
and I guess enough talk about photography on an audio podcast, but, <laughs> but uh, I, I appreciate that. And then hopefully all of you at home will be able to see some proof of this. It will be on the Misfits shop. Shortly. And Chris, would you, just before we jump off this, do you want to talk a little bit about the, the intermediate plans that you have for socials for this as well? That might be helpful for. Well, I, yeah, I haven't decided yet. Fair. So again, we have, okay. I, I had this half thought about like, why don't I, cre I hate Instagram. You all know this by now. So why don't I just create an Instagram gallery of maybe curated 50 shots of what might Brody's choking on his water of what might, of what might go into the book. And I'll just have Instantly that there. So impassioned. <laughs> right. And a daily, like a daily release of maybe this shot, maybe this shot, like whatever else. Right. Maybe and I'm thinking about it. Cause it's just another headache, whatever. Um, Brody's got a million different theories and strategies about how to leverage this. I'm still. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Um, it's because I hate Instagram. Um, so I don't, I don't know is the short answer. There may be an Instagram attached to this just so the gen pop can see what's available. Um, <clears throat> but then it's then, like mm. final question. And, and then I, I will, I promise I'll let you get off of this. If, and maybe not even if it's like received well, like where it's fucking blows up, I, I, even if it just has a good reception, is this something that you would continue to do? I don't. Yeah, good question. I don't. I don't know because uh, if I'm if I feel like I'm hustling for content now, I definitely don't want to fall into quantity over quality. Like I'm already curating my shots, and it would right. depend. It also <clears throat> it, it it takes time. For um, for context, I spent yesterday. Let's say I walked around the city for two or three hours yesterday, which you can which you can do with a camera. Um, I'm I came home. There was I think over a hundred and twenty shots, uh, and I would have edited five or six. You are hard on your fucking shots. No, but that's but. No, and you should be. You should. I, you're right. It's just a curiosity for for me. It's just a curiosity because the way that we've structured the misfits hmm. and the vision that you have in that, I, I, I'm the strategy guy. I can. I me and Chris, that's why me and Chris work so well together. It's because vision and strategy. I, I mean, hmm. you can't beat it. You can't fucking beat it. If you have one or the other, you might be okay, but you have them both and. Yeah, it's just unbeatable. So the reason I say that is because not not maybe in the sense of such a linear fashion as in this is my street photography from here to here, but that could be cool. Um, it, you have so many options, you know, like whether it's themed, whether it's fucking, it, it's geared towards travel, what, you know, all these things. I'm just, it's just a curiosity. A tra yeah, a travel, a travel one would be nice. A travel one would be nice. So let's say let's say we get investment for other projects, which we might talk about in a second. All of a sudden, my entire life changes. I'm probably living in a different country. My camera will be coming with me. Oh, you know? Probably. He's already said he's he's gone. <laughs> um, sorry. Prob Australia. Probably. Yeah, yeah. But my camera will be going with me, and it's it, yeah. And so whether that makes it into another book who's to say and still we're talking you were talking before about permission still hanging over my head is like am i allowed am i allowed to do this and if i again if i get funding for this major fintech thing over here is the chief creative officer and founder of a fintech allowed to you know publish books on street photography oh, so fuck it. we're misfits my friend we're, well, you are allowed hey that's what we're going to learn in season three right <laughs> All right, let's talk about let's talk about that. Let's talk let's about, talk about fintech app. What? Let's talk about the fintech app. Um, <laughs> so misfits that have been following around know somewhat of the picture. Do right. you want to start from the beginning? I'll give, yeah, I'll give the I'll give the bullet points. Um, <laughs> all right, so we're in we're recording in October of 2023. In March of 2023, I designed a fintech app. Misfits designed a fintech app, which in hindsight is 
I reimagined how global finance would operate, then designed a platform that would facilitate this that was user centric. Um, that's the nutshell version. I managed to have a very good friend and business partner, Robert, who's a Swedish friend of mine who lives in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, so he came on as a co-founder. Fast forward a little bit, we end up pitching to two different investors in Sweden for 10 million each. And at the time they both said, yes, they wanted to see business plans. So we gave them, put together a business plan, and then, you know, they had a look at it. I got frustrated waiting because <laughs> it had been more than a couple of weeks. And I expressed this to Robert. And he had a third option, which was a funding platform that is associated with the, the UN, so the United Nations. So the United Nations has 17 sustainability goals for the future, um, alleviating poverty, having clean water, green energy, all these sorts of things. So if you have a project or a concept uh, that ties in to any of these sustainability goals, that you know there's options for funding there the, the the catch is robbie's contact who submits to this platform said how much are you asking for he's like well 10 million us he's like mm, it needs to be a big ask so robbie goes 100 million and the guy's like yeah okay so we very quickly had to retailer the business plan the pitch to reflect well we need 10 times the amount now and that got submitted in September, the end of September, that's gone off to whatever UN platform. Um, the good news is, okay, the bad news is that both the investors from Sweden came back with no's, um, more to do with timing than to do with project. The war in Ukraine is also fucking with the Swedish economy. So there's that. The good news is the platform uh, for the UN it cleared the initial criteria or whatever. So we are eligible to be submitted in one of the streams for funding. We, there was the option to get it into the October stream, like straight away. I don't know whether it's made it into that. Uh, so if it won't be that one, it'll be another one that's further along the line. So the upshot misfits is since I'm currently waiting to hear some sort of result on do we have a hundred million dollars worth of investment for this platform or not. And Robert and I and Brody as well are convinced it's not if, it's when. So is it going to be October, November? Is it going to be November, December? Or is it going to be sometime next year? And it's a torturous position. I was just going to ask, so how does that sit with you? I, okay, I, I'm not going to lament it too much because you, you personally, Brody, have heard for weeks and months how fucking frustrating and annoyed and you know, I am with. Justifiably so. Okay, thank you. On the other hand, I've also had other associates and friends kind of look at me strangely and go, kind of a good place to be in isn't it and i and i have to concede that but i i'll i'll concede it with this disclaimer it's like i'm not a corporate kid i'm not a tech startup bro i'm not a crypto bro i'm not a fintech bro i'm i'm the, <laughs> I'm, I'm the creative kid that solved the financial system but i have nothing to do with banking and finance right so this is kind of my first rodeo I don't, I don't know what the timeframes are. I don't know what the logistics and process is. I only have my framework. And so the part of the reason why I've been so unbelievably frustrated is people are taking five or six weeks or more to develop some sort of decision and sort of come back. And do you know what I could have done with five to six weeks? You know, I could, I could, I could audition I could audition an ensemble, rehearse for four and go live by week five or six with a Shakespeare that would run for three months. And you're waiting. Uh, anyway, so you get it. Um, it's not my world. 
And I'm incredibly grateful and lucky that I've got a business partner like Robbie who can walk me through certain ins and outs and has the right, has these contacts. Um, we're probably going to sit down this week to discuss what our next steps might be. Um, but in the meantime, while I'm building with you misfits, I'm waiting for this thing over here. And to, to answer the elephant in the room, even if that kicks off, even when we, if, and when we get, well, when we get the hundred million or 10 million or whatever it happens to be, I'm still going to be a misfit. So I've already made that commitment to Brody. That's non-negotiable. Um, and you can hear about fintechs over here, but. Which for you guys too, um, we are working on a documentary of what this <laughs> looks like and, and, and <laughs> again the timing on this has been different number one chris's experience number two my own as well and mm. really timing with you guys has kind of been fundamental in where we're at with this and we've got a ton coming at you guys and this is something that i personally would like to have the impact that i can see it having and for you guys, again, it's that window into permission, right? Hmm. This isn't Chris's world, and he's here, right? This this isn't his normal project, and he's working it. This is possible for you. It's possible for you. And the experience itself and having a look into what someone is going through may, A, help you make a commitment, or B, help you decide that, Ultimately, that's not the commitment I want to make. And you can mm. find some fucking peace in that shit. Because I'll tell you what, this isn't easy. It's not easy to start a podcast and turn it into a business. It's not easy to fucking submit 10 to 100 million worth of funding and sit and wait on that shit. It's not fucking easy. But it is worth it. We'll see. <laughs> Fair. I idealistically and philosophically I agree with you. Obviously right. I'm here. Um, and, and also it's, it's misfits that make, make these changes, take these chances and make a difference. Right. Seldom ever. Is it the nice accountant in the room <laughs> that, you know, the nice polite accountant, that shifts the world to make a better place. But hey, if you are a nice, polite accountant and you are listening, it may be time to be a misfit too. <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed. You're, You're allowed, allowed to be a misfit. Yeah. Put put down the Excel spreadsheet. Come hang out. Buy a t shirt. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Plugs all day. Plugs all day. So that's yeah, that's again, talk about everything. Solve nothing. Uh, that's that's going to be our catchphrase. Must be, must it has be. be. But but this is, yeah, shit. This is where it's at, misfits. Like we're we're building in public with you. Uh, we we wanted to make that commitment early. We've tried to honor that commitment along the line. Moving into season three, it's going to be more of the same. Um, and and yeah, look, I'm I'm partly frustrated that. By the end of season two, I didn't have you know the bombshell to drop and go fucking win. But look, here's the good news: if I can let you know what I'm I'm building here at the end of season two, hopefully by season three when we get the win, you can all celebrate with me. I think that'd be cool as fuck. I think they would. However long that takes, Jesus. I think so in the meantime, so in the meantime, we'll design t-shirts, we'll put together photography books, we'll build corporate sponsorships, we'll design services for you guys and other misfits who want to work with us and keep it real. Couldn't have said it better. B, any final words? Because, you know, it, well, everyone can drink because there's nothing coming up next. <laughs> thank god um <laughs> someone's got to do a supercut someone has to do a supercut of every time i ask brody if he knows and then how many drinks you'd have to drink someone right, post that... in the comments how many times we'd have to drink in season two 
All right. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Right. Bye. <laughs> um, no, I'm just, uh, it's weird. I came into season two with a lot of excitement and that's not changed, but it, it, it's, uh, it's brought something different with it. And the, I think it's determination. And, uh, I, not that I didn't have it for the professional misfits before. It's just knowing the impact we've made, taking a look back at what we've done. It really puts it in a fucking perspective. I, I think you said it during our production meeting this week, actually, is like, look, if you, for what you've been through last six months, and considering we really grew this podcast in the last six months, any time within that time span, you had your ticket out, you had your excuse to quit, you had your excuse to say, it's too hard. Um, I can't right now. Totally totally reasonable and justified and you have him and you sort of came to this realization a couple of days ago like that's that's when people quit and i didn't and you actually double triple down and really committed to the thing so that goes to show that this is what you want and this is what you want to do and so that's a little green flag indicator of of where season three is going to drive to i think that's really cool too I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be good. You guys better listen. <laughs> All right, Misfits. Here we are. The end of season two, soon to be the beginning of season three. Keep an eye on the socials. Keep an eye on the Patreon fan page as well, because we'll definitely be keeping you update, keeping you updated on what's going on when we're coming back, um, where the store is to get your shirts and your office tumblers um, and all those sorts of things. Maybe to get a photography book if it's published by then, office we'll see. Tumblers. Office tumblers. Uh, um, but we know what they're really called. We do. We're, but a big, hey, a big shout out to all of our subscribers on YouTube because we've slowly seen you double over the course of this season. Big shout yes. out to everyone that listens to us on Spotify. 50% of you we know are females, women. So glad to know we're not another misogynist podcast, hopefully. Seriously. I, I did want to talk about that earlier when we're, we, I was going to say, hey, and just not so you it. guys know, 50% uh, of our audience is female. So, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, but we... We've seen the growth there. And even if we don't know who you are, we recognize you and see you and appreciate you. And that's why we keep going. If you want to like and subscribe, that would be great because then we'd have a clearer sense of who you are and we can keep going. Um, and if you really want to support us, yeah, find us on Patreon, go to the Misfits shop. We'd love you to wear the merch and show off at the gym. On that note, for the final time for season two, I've been Chris. I've been Brody. And you stay classy, Misfits. We're going to see you in season three. <laughs>